Welcome to Kick Back with Chris. Kick Back with Chris, the martial arts podcast. Brought to you by www.mitmaster.com. Hello and welcome, finally, to another episode of Kick Back with Chris, the martial arts podcast. Um, firstly, I want to start out by apologising for the slight break um, since the last episode. Uh, I won't bore you with the full details, but let's just say, as we do in true martial arts fashion, I've uh, gone to town on trying to break myself pretty spectacularly, but uh, not to worry, all, all's well now, getting there, getting there, I just had a bit of an injury, so uh, I just had to take a little bit of time out to focus on that, and then busy with my school, uh, assessments going on, and then uh, to really finish it off, I had the opportunity, a bit of a positive one now, I had the opportunity to work on a film production, um, kind of came up last minute, so yeah, busy times, but not to worry, we're back to it now, back to schedule. Um, so today we are going to be joined with Luci uh, Del Gardio. I don't want to butcher his name. I'm terrible with names. I probably said it right. Although, in fairness, he does tend to butcher other people's names from time to time, I've noticed. So all's fair. But no, uh, Luci's going to be joining us uh, to uh, talk about his background in martial arts training, obviously, and um, share some details with us about his upcoming events, and just have a general chat, really. It's one of those things where, you know, whenever I do speak to him on the phone, we, we, we tend to talk for ages, and every time we, we say, you know, we really should be recording this, it'd be good for the podcast. So, that's what we did. Um, we will also be having a very long overdue catch-up with uh, Mitmaster Matthew Chapman, um, having a good chat about a topic, well, this is a bit different this week, because... Um, some of you may have seen one of my uh, occasional Facebook rants the other day. <laughs> I say occasional because I try not to do it too much now. But obviously, I'm super passionate about my industry, about my work, and you know, when I when I see people um, or hear about people uh, getting ripped off for want of a better description, you know, it does uh, does boil the blood a little bit, and I do tend to have a little vent about it. So yeah, we had a little chat about that. So. Um, be sure to, to listen in for that one a little bit later on. Um, so what we're going to do first, as I always like to do at the start, is have a little bit of a, a catch-up with things that have been going on, little bits of information that people have sent in to us. So uh, actually, talking about M M Master Matt, we're going to start off with um, one of his posts that he's put in the uh, podcast event promotion group, um, which, by the way, if you use, then that's that's what I um, use to sort of pull all the, these bits of information. So if you've got something to promote, be sure to put it in there. Um, so the Mitt Master to open seminar London Stansted um, with special guest instructors on Sunday the 5th of May between 10 a.m. and oh actually no it starts it's two days so it's Sunday uh, starts at 10 and finishes Monday um, at 4 30 p.m. at the Novotel Hotel in Stansted and the postcode for that is CM241SF um, so I'll just read quickly through the description. Um, it says here, this year's open seminar is going to be bigger and better than ever. Firstly, this year's seminar will be held over two days in Stansted near London. Um, the list of guest instructors in there, I'm just going to quickly read through some of the people. So we've got uh, David Breed, we've got Phil Norman, we've got Bob Breen, obviously Matt himself. So yeah, you know... Um, Really, really good event. This um, I'm just looking at it now. I'm tempted myself now that I'm looking at it. Um, so if you're interested in that one, then if you pop along, in fact, the best thing to do is probably to get in touch with Matt because the um, the website itself is a, a pretty pretty tricky URL. But um, I'll uh, I'll I'll do my best to get it into the show notes so you can you can check it out there. Okay, so the next one. The next one we have is oh, from my friends over in Catterick at the Progressive Martial Arts School. Um, they're going to be holding a Defendo seminar with the excellent instructor, the head of the Defendo UK group, um, Mr. Clive Elliott. I've actually been to one of Clive's uh, workshops before and it's it's really really good stuff um i'm just going to look for the details here we go so on saturday the 11th of may between 12 30 and 4 30 at the progressive martial arts studio in uh Catterick. Um, and there is another one of those somewhere so don't get confused with that and end up in the wrong area of the country and um, their postcode is dl 94 xd if you get in touch with um steve or emma smith uh to progressive martial arts i'm sure they'll be able to help you out with the details on that one i'm just going to quickly look to see if I can see any price information on there. 
Uh, is it on the poster itself? Let's load the poster. That would be a good starting point. Uh, yep, £30 in advance. So it's 12.30 till 4.30. So yeah, good good deal on that one. Um, if you if you like hurting people and like being hurt yourself, <laughs> it's a good one to do. Uh, really interesting stuff, the Defendo. Worth, worth checking out. Right, let's go back to the main page. If technology will play the game, let's have a look. There we go. Oh, too far. One more click. There we go. So the next one. Okay, so um, now I've got to be careful on these because some of these closing dates um, I've finished up. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to skip the tournament ones. Just with regards to the tournament one, guys, as well. Don't multiple post. I know that you're keen on, on promoting what you do, and I get it because I do it with my 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 online stuff. Um, but with this with this group, if you multiple post stuff, I end up saying it more than once, and then I just look like a, an idiot. But it, it just clogs up the group, so just post it once um, because I don't want to have to start banning people. But you know, the, there's a pinned post at the top, and people some people are posting like the same event like three and four times uh, in a week, and you know, I don't need to see it three times. I know I'm a bit slow sometimes, but I'm not that slow. But yeah, anyway, so I'm going to skip the tournament posts because I don't know which one's closing dates have ended and, and whatever. So I don't want to cause any confusion. Um, so I, I'm just a quick one now just to mention Matt State's Fight Back Martial Arts um, initiative that they've got going on. He did actually come on to, to explain about that a couple of weeks ago. It's worth going back to check that one out. Um, so yeah, do go and have a look. If you look up Fight Back Martial Arts, it's on um, on Facebook. They've got a group. I'm actually just going to have a little look at it now, just to see see what's what. Um, lots of instructors in there um, doing their thing to help support veterans um, through martial arts. So you know, please do go and check that out um, and give your support if it's something that you feel you can help out with. Um, the last one I'm going to do is to mention that the British Martial Arts Awards 2019 details have now been released. Um, the event itself is going to be taking place on November the 16th, 4pm uh, until, well, when it finishes really. Um, if you've ever been, oh, and it's, in the, it's at the Lily Shawl National Conference Centre. Um, down just sort of sort of Coventry area. Um, I've um, I've been before multiple times and it is it's a brilliant event, absolutely brilliant event. Um, tick tickets are fifty pounds for adults, thirty pounds for kids. Um, you know, obviously with this event, you know, carrying on the legacy um, that that Tony helped to you know set up this event. Obviously with a lot of other people in in, in the wings as well helping out. Uh, but Tony's wife Sarah has taken over. Um, what I like about this is she's she's actually had the note at the bottom, I'm a tougher cook, tougher cookie than Tony with a smiley face. Uh, and by that obviously she means, you know, um the, the none of this, you know, you'll pay on the day and all that sort of stuff. So um yeah, obviously that's obviously a little joke, but no, um if you're interested you can get in contact with them at the Facebook group there the tickets are purchased via PayPal, um, and you you can do it. The, the link is at Sarah at WayOfTheSpiritualWarrior.co.uk. That's the PayPal address to sort out for that. Um, there is a website now as well. I'm just going to have a little look at what the website address is because I want to read it out because it is important because you want to obviously send your nominations through. Um, so the website address is bma.warriorsassemble.com. Okay, um, and then obviously you can go on there to to nominate. Um, the event itself is sponsored by our our sponsors, uh, Mitmaster. They're sponsoring that event, so uh, go check that out too. Uh, to nominate, there's a little nominate button at the top. Um, there's loads of different categories. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look through now to see what there is. So these are things like Martial Arts Woman of the Year, Pioneer of the Year, Contribution to Martial Arts. Um, there's overcoming adversity, male competitor, that sort of thing. Um, there's media personality of the year as well. I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that might be something we could be up for. You know, so get those votes in. <laughs> how, how cool would that be? But anyway, joking aside, if you're interested in placing votes, nominating people, um, go along to there and check it out. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump straight into our interview with Lucci. Um, I actually recorded this earlier this week. Um, nice to catch up with him as always. And then what I'll do is I will come back to you all on the other side. Enjoy our podcast? Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review Kickback with Chris on iTunes today. Okay, guys, so joining us on the phone now, we have Lucci, the organizer of the one and only Kaizen Show. How are we doing today, sir? I'm very well, Chris. How are you? 
I'm good. Right. Yeah, good I'm good. Morning to listeners, or afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, you've got to say wherever you are in the world now. Wherever you it, are in the world, I know. We've I got know. listeners all over the place now, which is pretty do cool. Do you know what? Do you know what, Chris? Man, I'm going to uh, I'm going to Tunisia in August. I, well, oh, yeah. Last time I went to Tunisia was about ten years ago, just some family holiday. And I went to Tunisia in August to um, meet somebody, meet a martial artist. Okay. Yeah, like uh, I'm not told my wife this because uh, you know when we go away on family holidays, <laughs> like, like you switch off from work, you switch off from everything, which is fair enough. And um, I've met this, I've met this guy who, who lives in Tunis, which is the capital, and we're staying in Hamanet, I think, yeah, Hamanet. And um, yeah, he's going to take me to the old gym. The old gym is uh, what the Romans built. So I'm really it's like a Colosseum, what the Romans built. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And we're going to have a day of martial arts together. That's so like, wow, depending, well, depending on how hot it is. Depending on how hot it is, Chris. But yeah. so, so when are you yeah. when are you going to break that to the rest of the family then? When are you going to... When I get there. When I get there. <laughs> you know, every, every time we go on, every year we go on, our, we go on these holidays, at least one day, apart from last year, because we, we, it was too hot last year. It was like 42, and I, I just couldn't walk nowhere because it was just too bloody hot. But normally I just just go out on an adventure. I tell you a funny story. We was in Benidorm. We was, we was staying in Benidorm, and outside my hotel we, 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 was this massive cross. And those of you who know who've been to Benidorm will know this massive cross. And you know how you look at something, you think, oh, that can't be that far. <laughs> and, um, last couple of days of the holiday, uh, I just got a like a, a, a little bag together with some water and a couple of signs and went went for a walk. Mate, I couldn't believe how far it was, pal. And uh, the wife nearly phoned the bloody Spanish police to come and find me. But, <laughs> yeah, so I've got to tread careful, man. But I'm looking forward to that, mate. Yeah, we're going to talk about, you know, uh, he, he does jujitsu as well. And I, I, mean, I do jujitsu, which is um, going to be cool, mate. So we're training a Tunisian dojo, which we're really looking forward to. Fantastic. So, talking about, obviously, your training, let's go right back to the beginning of your journey yeah. in the martial arts. How, where did, when did it start and how did it start? What was the reason well, for it? I, I come from a really big fat Italian family. All right? I've got six older brothers and one sister. And um, five of us are at Dangre, believe it or not, in jiu-jitsu. And this is how it all started. No, no, one of my brothers was, is a judo boy. So I've got six of us. All six of us have done some sort of martial arts. Um, five of us followed the jiu-jitsu path. And one of, one of my brothers um, did really well in judo. He was a left-handed judo player all right um you know they all they all, they all got they all got married and packed in and, and apart from one of my brothers who's who, who's my teacher who's, who's my currently still my teacher and my advisor and men, mentor but um doesn't go on the martial arts scene if you know what i mean he's one sure. of those who are, he's very very closed doors he's not like marfie like me who gets out there um he's, he's quite sensible um yeah anyway well we was there was a film on it was on a school night. Mum, mum wouldn't let me watch it. And the film was called Enter the Dragon. Oh, yeah. Um, big Brother persuaded my mum to say, look, let him, let him watch this film. You know, I was really was playing up. I was about nine, nine years old. Um, and I watched Enter the Dragon and just got absolutely hooked. The next day, I went to school. A couple of my friends also watched Enter the Dragon. And we all, um, we all decided to kick the hell out of each other in the <laughs> playground and practice the moves. <laughs> Like big flying kicks and do the Wah! noises yeah. and everything like that, man. Yeah. Um, one of my pals did karate with um, a guy called Simon Oliver. Okay. Um, which I'm sure the, the people who in, in the karate world would have known who, yeah. know who Simon Oliver is. Yep. Um, and I, I grew up in a, a in an area. It was just outside Nottingham City Centre Centre called um, called Snenton, just not far from the Nottingham Forest and Notts County Football Club. Okay. Um, it's quite. It's a very, really good multi, multi, uh, multi culture area. There was two karate classes. There was a judo club and a boxing club. When I went to all of them, <laughs> um, and I started. I, I, I said to mum, you know, I want, I want, I want, I want to go to this karate class, and you know, my mum always. My mum's a little five foot Italian woman, and she's always saying, "I've got all these bloody sons, and not one of you can play football." She's quite. <laughs> she's quite right. <laughs> One of us, you would think, six sons, Italian family, passionate about football, and um, not one of us can play football. But you know, never mind. <laughs> so um, we, I went, I went to, I went to train with Simon Oliver. Um, I think got to about purple belt. Uh, at, at this 
at this time, my my brother, who's my teacher, he, he, he already had a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, they just took the Michael out of me big time for doing karate. And they did jiu-jitsu. So I started jiu-jitsu um, about 12, 13 years old. And just got, I just absolutely loved jiu-jitsu. So I did jiu-jitsu and I started boxing at the same time because Rocky like Rocky Four came out. Right. Uh, I went to see Rocky Ford. My, my, my sister's boyfriend, who was a boxer at the time, a really good amateur boxer. He took he took me boxing, and um, I'd, I'd I'd like amateur fights. I, I boxed under uh, a guy called Tommy Thompson, who who, in my opinion, is the most underrated boxing coach in the bloody world, man. The guy, if, if I, um, Rick Young travelled all the way from Scotland just to go go to his gym and just go just to go and train with Tommy Thompson, and he's had people like Hoyce Gracie on the on the pads and he's trained, he's trained um, Prince Nassim. Wow. Uh, and he's still really, he's still really very popular in Nottingham in the, on the boxing scene. Um, I, again, he's a really good friend of mine, but you know, it's, he didn't do, he, he, he should be right up there to be honest, but I don't know why he's not, but you know. So all I those, did, all, yeah. all those brothers, all those brothers all training. You say six. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine some of the scuffles. Yeah, well, oh, <laughs> I got, I, I, being the youngest brother, I, I always got battered for everything anyway. <laughs> I always got battered anyway. If it was, you know, if everyone wants to kick off in the family, mate, it's like, all right, I was the, you know, I was the Uki. That's why I don't mind <laughs> being the Uki now. So I'm like, there's nothing you can do to me, man. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I, I discovered things like Muay Thai and JKD as well, um, which I really, really enjoyed. Then the night in in the nineties, mate, and uh, I discovered Jeff Thompson, and um, you know went since the the real I hate that word reality, <laughs> reality based. Can't stand it, honestly. Can't stand. It. I used to I used to absolutely love reality based, as it as it was called to us. And I got sort of trapped between traditional jujitsu and reality based kind of arts. Um, with the federation I was with, they hated stuff like that. And it was very, very, uh, very traditional. Like, but, but now these days I teach, um, I teach combat jujitsu, which is basically the best of both worlds, and it, and it, it, it really works. I've been doing that since 2012, and it okay. really, really works. So I, I, you know, I went down the reality base scene, and I didn't really, didn't really get on with it. But although I do have a passion, passion for it, and I think it is great. Uh, but I just hate the word reality, you know, kind of thing. The way I see it, make if you can make your artwork, it's great stuff. Hmm. And there's some really good self-defense instructors on the scene at the moment. Don't use, don't need to use the word reality. And you know, and it, they do things what it says on the tin. So that, in a nutshell, that's my up to now. That's my martial arts. Yeah. Uh, I tried Aikido. I was really crap at that. I really was crap at Aikido. <laughs> um. Yeah, did a bit of judo. I like, I like my judo. I've got cool. a green belt. I've got a green belt in judo. So, at what point it's in obviously, <laughs> at what point, yeah, at what point in the journey did you decide to move into teaching? What was it? Was there anything in particular that prompted that, or was it just sort of a natural? Yeah, rest? I was, my, my my brother, my, I, I I taught all the juniors in my brother's class as well. So I was an assistant coach for years and years, kind of kind of thing, like a club coach. Um, I opened my first club when I was like 21 years old and it absolutely failed miserably because I had that mindset of, you know, Jeff Thompson's reality-based kind of stuff and it didn't really work well. Um, I was sort of like trapped in between the jujitsu and the reality-based kind of kind of thing. I was mm. quite, you know, so it didn't really work and I had some time off and it was actually uh, my wife got me back into the, I nearly I nearly packed in to be honest. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. My wife, my wife, my wife. Sort of. I was having a really bad, bad time in my life, man. It like, I won't say hit rock bottom. It was pretty, pretty poor. I met my wife. I, I went. I was, I was a bit of a naughty boy before, before all that. Uh, not really worth talking about. To be honest. Mm. <laughs> to be honest. Um, I went on the door for a bit for about five years. Yeah, not really talking about when he's storming out there, being on twenty, twenty-five five years i've still got my face intact so i'm quite happy yeah um so it's pretty pretty crap in between jobs and my wife's like basically i'm a mother-in-law as well um uh, my mother-in-law said you know i mean i've, I've just my mother-in-law came came home and she said to me 
you know, I've just been to the pub, like you do on a Sunday afternoon, mm. play cards, whatever they do, what people that age do. I said, this guy come up to me and said, you're really good. You really, really are good and you should get back into it. So I opened, I opened my club up in the area I live. And um, it started off with just adults. Um, it went, went quite well. And then, um, then my mother-in-law gets said, do you know what, Lou, you should teach kids. And I'm like, fucking hell. Do you know what I mean? So I opened, um, <laughs> I opened a kids club. But now, you know, we're not, I'm not a full-time teacher. And I, I'm purely why. I've been in like sales and marketing all my life since I left school. Mm. And it's really, it's all I know, really. And um, I'm quite good at it. So I've, I've heard... I, I, as it stands at the moment, uh, the way I see things, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Sure. And I've got a really, really good job, which allows allows me to take my family on nice holidays and pay for good things and, you know, have a, have a good standard of living. Sure. Um, and I, you know what? I take my hat off to full-time school owners and instructors. You know, I really, really do. I really do admire you, honestly. Um, but at the moment, you know, life's not broken, so it's not going to be fixed, hence the reason why I'm not a full-time teacher yet. Um, so the next stage in my life, potentially, yep, I'm going to take that step and be a full-time teacher. So uh, we, we've got about 70, 80 members in our academy. And I'm really, okay. We're really we're happy. We're happy with that. Sure. It's quite a strict platform. You know, um, we're not. I've got no production black belts, as I call them. You know, it's, it would take about seven eight years to get to like um a, a, what a, dan, a decent damn great level um which, which i believe is about right um so it is it's quite a strict and disciplined platform sure uh, but we're all happy we're all having a good time which is the whole objective absolutely so more yeah. recently that's coming forward to more recent times you decided to step into the uh, the world of the martial arts expos Oh, that was by accident uh, before. But, yeah, but by, really? I, I, yeah. Well, I don't by accident. I just, you know, do you know what? I, I woke up, I thought, you know, people who know me, I do silly things for a laugh, and I always bite off more than the truth. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, 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 honestly. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? And I'm sort of like, when people say, oh, you can't do that, I was like, watch, watch. I'll, I'll do it twice and take pictures. <laughs> um, so... Those who know, so I, I, uh, I've got, there's a couple of platforms. I really enjoy putting shows on. I enjoy that. I enjoy bringing people together and helping people and everyone putting together and putting a good show on. I've got four events planned next year, and um, only two of them are martial art related. Okay. You know, so I'm, again, I'm getting a bit too big for my boots here because I'm going into like business expos now and, 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 and silly stuff like that, what's way out of my league. But, you know, make mistakes. Fall down, get up, you know, all staying, and I, I yeah. do bat off more too. If they happen, they happen. Who knows? Don't know. Yeah, I woke up. I was lucky enough to teach on um, on the UK martial arts show twice okay. for the first two years, and uh, that, that 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 was awesome. The second year, I was on the same time as Bill Superfoot Wallace. And I'm like, oh no, kind of kind of thing. But I got about thirty forty on my mat, and he got like four hundred. So I thought I did quite well. Um. Yeah, do you know what, Chris? I woke up and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'll put this together if I can. And like, so weird. Do I start? I'm like, right. And this is. I had a, I had a little plan. I thought this is where I'm gonna start. This is where it's gonna finish. But even that didn't go on at first. At first, originally it was gonna be in Birmingham. Right. But I only want to work with people with the same motivation and same desires as I do. These people in Birmingham didn't have that, so we have to we have to part company. Okay. Then it was going to be at a different venue in Nottingham. Again, the same thing sort of happened. And then I managed to find another venue in Nottingham, which is the home of Kaizen at the moment. Um, and it just started from there, man. Well, that, that's that's really like I said. People say, oh, "How did you do that?" I'm like, I generally don't know. <laughs> I, I I I just did it. I generally generally don't know. I still don't know now why. why <laughs> well, it's quite it's quite a unique venue as well, isn't it? Because it's yeah, it it's is. indoors yeah, and outdoors, indoors yet venue. undercover. It's very cool. That was that was a bit of accident as well. Not intentionally to be outside. 
as well until the you know someone said um, oh what what what's going to happen with all this area and I says yeah it's outdoors isn't it yeah yeah I like them I like that I like them yeah, I like that sod it we'll do it outdoors then we'll do one outdoors in the summer yeah originally it it, it, it was a winter event mm. and um, because of that we it's gone to sort of like a summer event but next year potentially it's going to be back to a winter event okay uh, and I'm looking at di- and, and different venues as well because I like to. I like to move it around. There's been talks. Uh, you know how people talk. There's, there's the talkers, isn't they? Hey, yes. You know, hey, I get. Hey, Luchish, can we can we do this together? That's why this is. With 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 Kaizen, there's only there's only me, Gary Enshaw now. Gary Enshaw's come on board. Yeah. We ain't got an IT department. There ain't a, a sales and marketing department. There's, there's there's just really us two, and you know, and we can just we just we, we manage what. Our, what we can, and we've created mm. something really, really, really good, you know. So, um, who knows? Who knows, Chris? What, what, what next year is going to bring? Well, I mean, in in the short time you've been going, you've certainly managed to attract some big names as well, yeah. um, and and television coverage, and you know, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. it's been very successful. And and the the one thing that I've noticed as well as a somebody who's attended both is there's a really really cool sense of community um yeah. and and friendship amongst there when you know when people aren't training you can see them all in groups or oh, everyone's chatting and and yeah. you know it's just a really nice really nice environment yeah do you know what i've got a pla- i've got a good platform to for instructors to come and show their stuff off and show mm. their thing off and you know moving forward looking at looking back and having these these structures what i had on there doing their stuff coming to now it, 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 it's proved a worthy cause for them and it's it's, it's it's really nice for people you know it's a great place to people to meet up but again uh, you know I don't know why it got like that um, yeah. there was a really good friendly atmosphere everyone was happy and the vendors were happy people were buying things people were chucking each other around I got I got two complaints Wow. Which was uh, the instructor was swearing. I'm like, for God's sake, it's not the best you've come up with. The instructor was swearing. Two instructors were swearing. I'm not, what the instructors, when the instructors teach, all I saw was an instructor teaching on them mats were with passion, with absolutely passion and all their heart and soul. That's all I got, all right? Now, some of the instructors are going to swear because of the styles that they teach, okay? Mm. And it sort of like goes with flow. Like, like, can you imagine, you know, if you jumped up and did your spinning back kit and, and, and you went, oh, effing out, effing out, boom, 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 mm. right? You expect a shot, <gasps> you know, yeah. you expect that kind of shot. But these, these, these are like top of their game in the self-defense world, world we're talking about. Yeah. You know, they, they teach, they, 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 they're teaching real, real stuff. And I'm, I'm like, you know, okay, you complained about two people swearing. Fair well, if that's the only uh, thing uh, they can think of, then that's yeah, you know uh, you can take that. <laughs> somebody said, somebody said, I didn't get my ticket checked. All right, I know for a fact loads of people sneaked in and didn't pay. Okay, something we, we're making mistakes. It's all new to us. All right. Um, yeah. Someone says we didn't have wristbands. I'm all right. Okay, fair enough. I give you wristbands. You'll end up taking them off. They'll be all over the floor, and I've got to pick them all up again. All right. <laughs> We're looking at we're looking at Kaizen goodie bags, so vendors so people can go around and talk. you know it, it, it's you know the timetables are all over. You know I can't stress enough. There's only there's only me and Gary behind Kaizen. We've got we've both got full time jobs. Okay, Gary yeah. wants his own business. You yeah. know I've, we've both got academies and we both both got families. And Kaizen is just a bit of fun for us. You know we yeah. you know. Who knows in the future? Who knows in the future? We'll have the IT department and the sales and marketing team and the, you know, the person who's in charge of the, the bloody bands and, you know. But if instruct, if inst- you know, instructors are going to swear on the mat, that's out of my hands. Out of my hands, I'm afraid. But overall, five out of five. <laughs> well, you know, you're starting to attract some some big. Um, sponsorship yeah. opportunities and and you know vendors that, as well now. So yeah, yeah, on the sponsorship opportunities, um, mm. there's going to be. Well, I'm working on some massive, massive, massive names, blue chip, big blue chip companies. All right, 
mm. well known. I can't I can't mention the names on sure. it purely because if someone is, I've lost it all. I've got to I've got to tread really carefully. Sure. Um, people don't see this part of a, of a range of things. Like if I I I'll email I'll I'll send an email and I will send my my pitch if you like. Because um, I've got to sell Kaizen to these big companies. And they're like, well, how, how many people come? Or, I don't know. All right, so why, why should we give you money to sponsor it? Like, like you know, fair enough. Sure. You know, so I'll, I'll send them an email. Three weeks later, they'll answer They'll they'll answer back. Yeah. And I've got to reply to that email three weeks later. You know, we're just small fishes yeah. kind of thing. But we're getting closer and closer and closer. Now, what it is, I'm not just pitching the Kaizen. I'm pitching the whole martial arts community. We are I'll happily share these sponsorships with everybody, yeah. so we can all grow together. That that that's that that that's fine, you know. Um, but yeah, vendors and sponsorships, good on them. Well done, well done. If it weren't for them, there'll be no show, to be honest with you. And again, mm. the, instructors, the instructors will be no no show, you know. Already, mm. already for this year, we've gave away 150 tickets. Just gave them away. Wow. There you go. Gave them away. Under 14s are going to be free, you know. The small, uh, the very small profits we've made the last last two years, we've gave away. But that's that's fine for me because I know I'm gaining experience one day, and it's this again. This is this is going to be a non martial art related thing. One day, Rodders, I will be a millionaire. <laughs> you never know. Who knows? Who knows? Absolutely, absolutely. So obviously, you know. Uh, you, you have, um, as you say, you have a background in, in sales and marketing and martial artists and you're running an expo. Yeah. From You're in a very unique position to have a quite a, um, a, a wide eye on the on the industry, on the wider industry as a whole. So, you know, what, what are your thoughts on sort of the martial arts industry in 2019 and where do you see it going? It's improving, man. It's improving, I think. Okay. It really is improving. You know, there's not been no, um, there's not been no wars lately, mm. which is nice. Not been no bitchiness or not much negativity. You, you're going to get negative. You're, you're always going to get divides. There's, there's been divides in martial arts for years, for years yeah. and years, haven't there? Yeah, right? yes. The, the, the federation I was under, that just split to pieces. Shattered to pieces. Everyone went there. Everyone went there. Everyone went. Everyone went, everyone went there. Uh, I don't think we'll ever see the day where the whole martial arts community will come together. You know, early probably when Chuck Norris kicks the bucket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When something like that happens, maybe. But um, you know, now I, I, I'm you know, but like, as before I'll get myself involved and jump in and give people my opinion. Now I'll just I'll just shut up and just do my thing. Which mm. is always the best best thing. I let my actions speak, man, and let's just just let it you know, it's been a pretty bad year for martial arts anyway. Yeah. You know, we've lost yeah. we've lost people, man. Um you know. Yeah. Got a bit of oil into the martial arts community. But as long as we all stay strong and you know, we we can carry that light if you like. Absolutely, carry absolutely. On, carry on and keep it moving forward. Everyone's happy, man. You know, self defence is cool. Self defence is really cool at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, some good arts coming. Some good some good instructors are coming coming through, aren't they? And absolutely. Kai Kaizan's a great platform. We've mixed it right up this year. Got some new faces in there. Yep. Got some old faces in there. Got some faces <laughs> I want on there, but they're not. Yeah. You know, what can you What can you bloody do, man? Yeah. Just 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 keep doing. This might be the last Kaiser. I don't know. Who bloody knows? Who knows? You know. Well, I suppose why, every why every year you probably feel a little bit like that, don't you? It's like, oh, I'm not doing yeah, this it's again. Hard. <laughs> it's hard. It, it, it's hard, man. It's an odd. It's an odd thing to do. You know what I mean? When you When you've got a busy lifestyle, anyway, it's really difficult. Um. But yeah, just keep supporting it, people, man. You know what I mean? That's all I can say. Keep supporting it. But but, but I'm playing around with some new ideas. Um, hitting into the self-defense, military, yeah. and yeah. Um, oh, I hate this fucking word as well. Reality, reality market <laughs> a bit more. What is you know it what about I mean? that word you don't like? What is it? I'm interested. It's, just, it's not. 
It's not reality. reality it, it, mate, do you know what? Do you know what? In the 90s, it was night, right in the 90s, everything was good in the 90s. Music was good in the 90s. Everything was good in the 90s. <laughs> right? Then this is what happens. Um, someone does a four, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not putting no one down or disrespecting nobody. All sure. right. But, but, but this is what, this is what I see. And I'm only probably saying what people are thinking. Right. You'll do a four day course in the ultimate self-defense system. Right. I hate that word ultimate. Cause if it was the ultimate self-defense system, everyone would be doing it, won't they? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Then after that, after that, they'll make up a cool style, like a cool style, like I don't know, sesame combat system, the ultimate martial art like that. combat system. Then the logo comes along, and it's normally with a skull, a machine gun, and a knife or something like that. Then the cool slogan comes along on the T-shirt, like "Slap my ass if you think you're hard enough." <laughs> then. Then they disappear. After three months, you don't see them. They're gone. Yeah. They're gone with the wind. But, you know, the self-defense instructors out there are making it interesting. They're making it interesting again. You know what I mean? And doing doing what it generally says on the tin. And they're lasting yeah. and they're doing very, very well and successful. Then you I'm get s- them. Then, get, then you get them. Look, that, they're the other side of the, of the coin. What just, you know, because they've got a cool T-shirt think that um and and the right and they use the word ultimate things like that they disappear they don't last long do they yeah um okay so um obviously we earlier we were talking about your events and uh, kaizen and things how what's the best way for people to get some information and um obviously from the point of view of getting tickets to join in and, and participate but you know maybe instructors yeah. that are looking to get involved in future events what's the best thing for them to do <laughs> Just, just hit us, just hit us on the Kaizen page. There's um, a few of us now. What run the admin on that? Um, one of us will get back to you. Okay. Um, do you know what? It, like every year, something like a month, a month or two before the event, that's when everybody wants to be teaching on it. Yeah. Or yeah. people are asking for stands and uh, you know these stands they, they sell out quite quick. You know, there's a few, there's, there's, there's about four or five charity stands on there now who will be raising money um, for themselves. Um, one of them, if I can mention, Adaptable Martial Arts, and we're, we're Kaizen, we're actually trying to help them raise money for a mini bus so they can take their people out on seminars and, 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 and things like that. That's cool. Um, yeah. You know, so, you know, the, the, the disabled martial artists who can't really move that, that well. You know, don't have the transport itself. So Neil Kirtland's doing an awesome thing there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, he, he, he's selling tickets, and all 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 the money's going towards that. And hopefully, we can do some fundraising for him um, on the day as well. Um, yeah, man. So I think stands are about. I need to do another count up and go back to the venue and maybe if if, if I have to extend it make the venue a bit bigger like i earn a second or third all out then you know so be it but we won't know it's a bit early days for that at the moment to be honest yeah i mean if people are out there are thinking about stands um yeah they need to they need to do it we we were actually talking about this weren't we a few weeks ago like yeah. if you remember back yeah. to the old days with this with like senai and things like that oh, that yeah, was the man. best yeah. bit wasn't it you took a wallet oh, full of cash and you bought senai. all sorts oh, senai was senai i man. I only I can only dream about getting Kaizen that up because that bit. I mean, the T Max as well, the martial arts in, in the one in that one in Coventry. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, oh, that was just that was. I think still to this day that was the best expo ever, ever, ever. That one. Yeah. It really, really was. Yeah, Master Ken were there. Every, oh, it was just amazing, amazing seminar um, seminars going off. Um, again, Senai Senai were great. Wasn't it? Senai was great. Um, yeah, kind of we're nowhere near that level. We're nowhere near that level yet, but it is going the right way. But that's what I'm saying about with the trade stands. If people are thinking about it and maybe yeah, uh, thinking, oh, well, I'm not sure. People go to these events wanting to buy things. Yeah, that would... things. I had a vendor sold out. He, 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 he went home. He went yeah. home at three o'clock. There's two hours left. I said, where are you going? He says, I've got nothing to sell. Sold out. 
Yeah. Uh, all right, no problem. And he booked, <laughs> he booked for the year after that 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 day. I had, you know, I had another I had another guy. Well, I've, I've got nothing left, but I'll, I'll I'll hang out a bit. You know, we got you know we've got these these axe throwing, this whip bloody whipping, this, this fire, this bloody fire blowing. This wow. Year. Yeah, no, I'm a. And I think there's a cutter. There's going to be a cutter like forms competition as well. Uh, oh wow! Um, cool. We, yeah, we've got notes to do that though. Um, someone else is running that. So they just wanted, they just needed somewhere to to do it. So, yeah, yeah. Go on then. Cool. 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 So you know, you know, that's, that's what that's what Kaizen's about, man. It's uh, all very very positive sounding stuff. So your own show to us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, as as always, it's been it's been fun chatting and and catching yeah. up and yeah, yeah. listening to all the cool stuff that you've got going on. Um, as I said, as, as obviously as Lucci said, if you're interested in learning more about the show, then pop over to the Facebook group. What I'll do is I'll list the Facebook group in the show notes so you can get to it direct. Um, obviously, there you can find out more about um, getting involved with the show or buying tickets. Um, and I believe yeah. that you're doing. There's uh, you, you run a an offer for instructors as well. So if they're a school owner and they're looking to wholesale, yeah. There's 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 there's, there's no there's no pressure whatsoever for the instructors, even if they're teaching on the event to sell tickets to their students. We're not really about that. But if if, if you do want to sell tickets, um, we we welcome third party agents. Of course we do. Of course we do. As I said earlier, there's only me and Gary. We haven't got a sales and marketing team. We haven't got the IT department. Mm. So, you know, if, if you want to sell tickets to your students, this wholesale tickets eventually, yeah, of course. Of course, we'll, 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 we'll share it with you. Of course we why, why, why wouldn't we? You know, why wouldn't we? And was enough yeah. as well. Thank you very yeah. much, Lucia, for your time. Um, and um, I'm sure we'll do this again soon before too long. Cool. And, I'd um, like to finish off by Chris by saying thank you keep doing what you're doing with your show I absolutely love it oh cool uh, yeah it's awesome keep doing keep doing what you're doing man and um, you know I wish you all the best and um, a message for the Thai boxers stop kicking trees <laughs> stop. it's not nice here's, here's one for you go and kick speed cameras try that one <laughs> Oh God! You could imagine it now. Where you spark something off now? What have I that. started off now? What have I started off now? Kick speed cameras. Kick trees. You showing this? Showing off? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You can imagine if it comes up on Facebook now. Someone's gone out and yeah, done yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's on you that I'm not. I'm taking no responsibility for it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I got six points in one week once, mate. I got, I got, I'll, I'll fully support them. I bet, you went, I bet you went and kicked some speed cameras after that. No, no. I, I drive a lot better now. It was a good thing. <laughs> oh, you're a good boy now. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, thanks again for your time, and um, we'll catch up again soon. All right. Nice one, Chris. Talk to you Cheers. later. Cheers. Brought to you by www.mintmaster.com. So, yeah, good fun to catch up with Lucci. Um, you know, some interesting, interesting tidbits there on his time growing up learning martial arts as well and um, that's a side to his training and i wasn't actually aware of as well so thank you to him for sharing that um just a quick one with regards to the audio as well on this one now um a few people over the months have, have said how sometimes it is difficult to um to, to hear the volume of, of the guests now there are there are ways and means around around uh, this issue um, involving some very quite expensive equipment. <laughs> um, at the moment, obviously, with with us with us being a new setup, as as professional as I'm aiming for it to be, we are limited by um, you know the equipment that our callers are using. So, um, you know, if 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 somebody's calling in using a phone or a, an iPad. Or you know, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, they're using a professional high-end microphone in a studio. You know, obviously, the the volume and quality is going to differ from guest to guest. Um, now, I do what what I can in the edit to try and balance that out, uh, but sometimes, you know, unfortunately, we are we are just sort of tied by uh, the the volume level that's coming in um, from from the from the guest side. Um, as I say, there is equipment that you can buy to help without various mixing desks and stuff, and that is the aim to get there. But obviously, I'm sure you can appreciate that that does 
um, involve quite substantial costs. So, um, you know, what you can do to help with that is you can go along to, here we go, a little segue. You can go along to uh, www.onlinekicking.co.uk and, and get one of one of my kicking courses, one of which um, has just actually been updated with some additional content. So if you're already on there, you're getting it for free. Uh, and because I'm super nice, um, I'm actually doing a reduced price on it of fourteen ninety nine just for this weekend. Through so through you know from today Friday the fifth right the way through to Monday, um, I'm going to be reducing it by um, five pounds. So if you're interested, go get that one. Um, it is the uh, kick uh, pad training course. Um, lots of different ways to work your your kicks. So it's not actually sort of kicking routines. It's more um, conditioning, drilling, um, and sort of balance based pad work um but go check it out you'll get an idea um if you've seen some of my recent facebook posts um with regards to uh, the wave master drills uh using a second second wave master to to focus on uh, chamber control loads of stuff like that in there i think there's 26 drills in there at the minute so um, if you're looking for content to teach your students or just for, you know stuff to uh work on yourself then lots in there go check it out uh, one more time that's onlinekicking.co.uk I know, a little bit of a shameless plug there. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump straight over to our call with um, Mittmaster Matt, Matthew Chapman. Um, really, really good one, this, guys. Um, it's not so much you get your pens and paper ready, this one. is more um, take a few sort of sharp intakes of breath <laughs> occasionally because we, we have a good chat on a number of uh, controversial sides to our industry. So, yep, um, enjoy, and I'll uh, I'll speak to you afterwards. You're listening to Kick Back with Chris, the martial arts podcast, brought to you by www.onlinekicking.co.uk. I'm again, finally, after a little bit of an extended period of three weeks, um, purely my fault, I will say that, um, it's time for our, well, I know it's not a weekly match, I suppose, is it? <laughs> well, it should be. Bi-monthly match. <laughs> but no, we got there, we got there. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm well. How are you? How's your neck? It, it's getting there. It's getting there. I need to stop falling on it. That would probably help. That, that would help a bit. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, you know how it is. We, we 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 get that to that magical threshold of forty, and then yeah, we don't. And then bounce. everything takes ten years to heal. We don't bounce anymore. We sort of snap and yeah, you know. But anyway, <laughs> I, 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 I've got a funny limp and a slightly twitchy little finger, but other than that, all's good. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! What happened to you? I was, I, basically, I was at a training weekend and I just took a bit of a fall on my head and, you know. What, from a sweep or a throw yeah, or yeah, something? Yeah, 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 it was a sweep, but, you know. But it, was no, it was no malice or anything. It was no, it was nothing. It was just one of those things, you know. Yeah. Um, two slightly over-exuberant martial artists plus, <laughs> plus, plus a wooden floor, you know. Um, oh, mate, on a wooden floor, out. So, um yeah, one of those things. I didn't even feel it at the time. It wasn't until a couple of days later, and then ne- next thing I know, you know, you know what we're like. I ignored it. I thought I'll go away. It'll be fine. So oh, I, I left it. I left it for what I think about ten days, and then, <laughs> and then I finally rocked up at the doctors and went, "Yeah, I can't move my head." And they were like, "All right, X-rays for you, fella." So I ended up having a load of neck X-rays done and all that jazz. So yeah. Um, you know, I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't get the results. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you mean you didn't get the results? <laughs> I did. Well, I thought. Well, it's not hurting as much now, so it must be getting better. So, oh. what, I, what, what I don't know about, <laughs> I can't worry about. You know. So. <laughs> oh my <mate>. awful! <laughs> everybody, everybody listening in right now, the martial arts people—they all know exactly what I'm talking about. You know. Of course they do. Uh, of course they do. What I don't know about, <laughs> I can't. You know, can't stress about. So, but now we're joking aside, it feels a lot better now. So, so, so. good. Apart, apart from the twitchy finger and the slight limp. Yeah, that, that'll go away. Don't worry. Well, well, it's just it's character. I like it. Rub some good. tiger balm on it. That'll help. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be the solution for everything, it's, right? Yeah, well, I said this for some people. But anyway, let's not get down that road. Right. What we're going to have a chat about tonight? Today, and I said tonight. Then it's not tonight. Today. Um, I saw your post the other day. Uh, it's quite interesting. My post, my Facebook post, yes. Um, the thing that I try not to do anymore these days, that every now and again I sort of like I have a, little, a, rant, yeah. a little social media meltdown occasionally. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, well, you know, good for the soul, isn't it? Um, but now, now, yeah, so we had a, as I mentioned in the in the the, the video, I ha- we had a, a parent come to us and they'd, they'd had a bit of a, a bit of an unfortunate situation at another school with them taking money for a uniform and then, and then, then, you know, changing the the school name, leaving the franchise, and then the the uniform being instantly out of date, 
Uh, and a few other things that the parents weren't happy about, about you know things that happened within the business, and uh, so they didn't they didn't return, having only been for five minutes and never actually worn the uniform, and they seem yeah. they're seemingly struggling to get a refund on that that uniform, and um, I, I you know I just found that a little bit disappointing, and then just to re- really really firm that uh, feeling up, I pop- popped a quick note on Facebook just to ask for some advice and some instructors, shall we say, um, jumped on to back up the school and and. Claimed, right. that, claimed that they hadn't done anything wrong and we shouldn't give them a hard time and it pushed my buttons a little bit I've had gradings this week as well so I think I was probably a bit stressed And uh, <laughs> fa- stressed Facebook fa- Facebook make that live video option far too easy now so I was straight on there and before I knew it I was down the rabbit hole And uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean a- if, if it's as you say you know they were there for five minutes they decided that they didn't want to join and and they can get a refund for a uniform that is out of date. That's disgusting behavior. It is. It is. It is. You it's, know, like, it's just morally wrong. You just like okay, or you know, you give them a refund, or you give them the correct uniform. You don't mm. like. I don't understand that. Yeah, I know exactly, and and you know, it, it's. It's, it's it's more disappointing where when people I found anyway when people you know jumped on to defend their behaviour because the, what they were saying was essentially from a legal point of view they've not done anything wrong. But well, it's know, not about that, is exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. You know, we're... especially in today's uh, Facebook world. I mean, you've had a rant about it now. Yeah. So <laughs> fifty odd people have seen that. Um, probably the parents have had a rant about it on Facebook as well. They're not going to get any recommendations. You can almost destroy a business and your reputation in a local area doing stupid shit like that. Yeah, for 40 quid, you know. For 40 quid, exactly. They might, they might as well have put a 40 quid on a Facebook advert saying we're a bunch of... Oh, I won't say that word, actually. <laughs> I, I, nearly, I nearly said an inappropriate word for iTunes then. <laughs> so, I mean, I wouldn't... I just don't understand that short-term sort of thinking. Yeah, we've got your 40 quid, you can't have it back. You know, within our we were within our rights not to give it back to you, but that's such short term thinking, and it's just it's just not good for the business. No, not at all. No, not, at all. not at all. Even if it's a legal thing, it's not the point, is it? It's no. about serving the community, and if you know someone isn't going to use your service, then you refund the money. I mean, this is not too difficult to understand. No, it isn't. And as you say, especially now with now we've been. I shouldn't say this because I probably tempt the universe into making it happen but um we've thankfully never been at the wrath of the mum's facebook group yet you know yeah. the um uh, the, the, every area has them these these facebook groups where um i say mums we do actually have a mums facebook group in our area but also like the, the moaning facebook sites where you know oh, people yeah. go on and they go uh my jimmy's karate class finished five minutes late tonight and and blah, 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 and then next thing you know 700 people are in they're going ah that's disgusting blah. you should come to this school instead and then we've never had one of those yet but i have seen how destructive those facebook groups can be um for businesses um yeah of course but i i, I know from who you are that you treat your customers really well so well, and your the, clients really well the ones that i like anyway yeah <laughs> so it shouldn't be a, a problem but you know it's this is this is modern day business and marketing you you have to take care of your customers you you know you um serve them as best as you can and if you know most of the time if in that situation someone is not even trained with you just wants a refund for um, a bit of out of date stuff that you've sold them yeah you should just give them their refund and wish them well and you never know they might come back again absolutely right absolutely right i mean we 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 had a young lad come in a couple of weeks ago actually um he he came in and i looked at him and i thought oh, i know you from somewhere and I couldn't quite figure out what he was. Anyway, he was twenty something now, and he used to train with us when he was a kid. And um, he'd, he'd something had happened when he was younger. He'd, he'd missed a grading or something, and he got upset and didn't want it. Okay, well never mind, Jimmy. But you're always welcome to come back if you decide you want to come back. Blah blah. blah. Yeah. And lo and behold, twenty you know ten plus years later, he's he's come back um, because you know we we made a point of of as he was leaving, being right with his parents, and and saying look oh I, I, look. All right, you've been you've been to one class this month, but you've already so like I think it was I looked back because we've still got all the records because I'm a bit 
fussy like that. <laughs> but he, um, no, that's a good idea. He, we, they'd paid for the the month on the first, and they'd finished yeah. on maybe I think it was the second or the third. So I refunded them that month because he'd only been to one class out. But I know some schools have gone. No, he's been he's been in July, so we're keeping that fee. Well, yeah, yes, he'd, he'd been for forty five minutes in July. So yeah. we gave them the money back. Um, and they were very thankful for that. So I, I like to think that that's perhaps played a part in shaping this young man's opinion of us. And he's exactly, back. yeah. I mean, it's 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 a it's an instructor's personal choice, really, isn't it? Yeah, Some, yeah totally. It's a balance. Some people just get walked all over by people taking advantage of them. Mm-hmm. Some people, like me and you, are kind of in the middle and try and do our best by our, our customers. Mm-hmm. And some people just try and fleece their students for as much money as they can get in the shortest time as yeah. possible as they can get. Um, I think the middle road is probably the best, obviously. You don't want to just be walked all over by people. And, no. and some no. people do take try and take advantage of your good nature. Of course. So is. obviously course. that's no good. Um, the other extreme is also no good because it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. You know, the whole, you know, contract thing, you're stuck in a contract, kid doesn't want to train anymore parents have tried and they've still got to pay for another nine months of training I, I, I'm not a fan of that personally no neither am I I think it's, it sucks you know kids kids you know I'm all about uh, when we have a kid that, that wants to that wants to quit and we have this in the welcome pack we actually pre-frame the parent and say, look, Jimmy is going to want to quit. This Jimmy's a right little shit, isn't he? It's always Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim, Jimmy is going to want to quit. It is going to happen sooner or later. And when it does, when it does, please speak to us first. Because it, it might be something small that he's exactly. made up in his head bigger and bigger and bigger. But we pre-frame yeah. them that it's going to happen so that you know when it comes along, they, they, they do come and speak to us about it. Um, and we find that helps tremendously in, in, in that respect. So, But also, um, look, the truth is, martial arts is not for everyone. It is, yeah. That's right. You know, uh, adults and kids are alike. Some kids might naturally want to gravitate more towards dance. You know, my kids do street dance. They love that. Um, they've done martial arts, but they really love the street dance. So that's their thing. And for us to force them to stay, because it's in our financial interest, <laughs> is not really on, in my opinion. Uh, and it's very difficult, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. a personal yeah. call. Um, and that's fine. You can run a very successful martial arts school without having the need for ridiculous contracts and time people down just by delivering a great service. That's it. I mean, we, but I think, you know, any instructor of the, you know, worth with any level of, with a decent level of experience will be able to tell if a child is having a wobble or if yeah. they genuinely don't want to be there. Um, yeah. And and you know when I when when we have like I say when we have a kid that comes and we know that they really do enjoy it and it's suddenly just snapped and it might be they don't know a form or they're worried about sparring or somebody yeah. said something yeah that's right and they, and they want to and they want to run they want to bolt you know and with the adults as well sometimes um, yeah and and I always like to have a chat at least have a chat with them so that it, you know if if they are still adamant that they don't want to do it at least they've had that conversation. So that they've they've taken a little bit of um, responsibility for that decision, rather than just going, "Oh, mum, I don't want to go," and then mum goes, "Okay, yeah, yeah." yeah I exactly. like if the parents can bring them in and say, "Well, we'll have a chat." Okay, so you definitely don't want to do it. That's fine, Jimmy. Don't worry. If you ever change your mind, you are welcome to come back. Um, yeah. So that they have that closure in their head as well, and I, I just think it's nice, you know, especially for, for we've had my kids have wanted to stop things, and and I've said to them, "Okay, well, that's fine. Well, we are going to go and have a chat with your, with your teacher about it because." You know, we owe it to them um, for yeah. how they've helped you to at least have a conversation with them. And, and I, I know some parents take take issue with that, but I, I just think it just teaches your kids good manners. Good manners, um, yeah, respect and uh, communication, yeah. right? And... Abs- absolutely, because that's how these sometimes these issues can be resolved, you know, through 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 a, a chat like a match chat like we're having now <laughs> yeah i don't want to do this podcast anymore <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't say no, that don't, enjoy say, it. don't say that don't no say i enjoy that. it it's good now on on a different subject sir uh something that i spotted the other day on facebook with my um, nosy eyes um yes. but you're sponsoring the british martial arts awards i believe uh, I am, yes. I'm trying to help out with that. I um, sorted out their website, reboot their website and got everything ready for them so that they can run the event. And they very kindly said I could uh, put my banner on that, which is nice of them. Um, but, you know, it was a, a great 
it's a, just a great event and it's done a lot for the martial arts industry and you know tony was an amazing sort of leader of that mm-hmm. and it would be nice to just just keep it going really Excellent. and Excellent. support it as much as possible definitely definitely i believe you're going to be at the uh is it the southwest martial arts is that right is that yeah right? southwest martial arts show that's going to be good cool cool so keep it um, lots and lots of uh, cool people going down to that it's uh, the first event that they've run but it's gonna be awesome and, and i understand why they've run it because i'm originally from the southwest and there's bugger all and going on in the southwest like that <laughs> it's all like all the events are up north so if you live in exeter or bristol or something you've got to travel four or five hours up north to go to the events up there you know and I understand. I think there's one needed in the south, southwest, definitely. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, oh, uh, just a bit of feedback as well. I, since we had our chat the other week about websites, I have updated my website now, so um, it's all sorted out, including taking off one of the classes that I wasn't doing anymore. So that's yeah, it's all that sorted. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, the thing with the website, and uh, now you've changed it, is you need to be able to track. Yep. if the changes have worked or not. And you do that with Google Analytics. So do you have Google Analytics on your website? Uh, well, I, I have a notepad and pen on my desk. <laughs> That's not Google Analytics. Is it not? <laughs> no, ideally you want to inst- uh, install that, um, the code, so that you can track how long people spend on your website, where they go, what they click on, the responses you get. So that way you can check how it's performing. Otherwise, it's kind of guesswork. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you got your notepad and pen, you're all right, aren't you? Yeah, I don't suppose I can do a right lot with that, really, can I? It's, I don't uh, know. Yeah, true, true. The analytics thing is really easy to to set up, and um, and then it just allows you to accurately check what's happening on your website because otherwise, it's really just total guesswork. Well, I tell you what, sir. How's about this? How about we talk about that on the next episode? Cool, we'll do. Should we do that? Because I would quite Let's like to it. know about that because I have no, I have no idea how to Google Analytics my website. <laughs> yes, no problems. I don't, I don't. Well, I know what it is, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I could even try and install it live as we're chatting. Ooh, craziness! Craziness! I can see if I can break my website in twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, we'll do that. Well, thank you for your time, as always. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and busy week, whatever you're up to. Thank you very much. I will. Uh, I was meant to be. Uh, here's a crazy story for me. So I booked a, a six-night cruise around the Med <gasps> by myself. So you, by you myself. for your accountability thing? <laughs> uh, no. For, <laughs> for it was like an internet marketing sort of digital nomad cruise type thing. So you hang around with other people doing the same thing. But you did so, say you were going to do that. Do you remember? We had that chat yes. about Yeah, that's kind yes. of, is that not the same thing? Is it? No, no, no. It is the same thing, yes. So, you, so you've done it. There you go. Uh, 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 wait. Oh, okay. I booked it. The boat sank? And then I, and then I cancelled it. Oh. <laughs> 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 and the, here's the weird thing I, I i was really looking forward to going and very excited but the closer it got to the date the more i thought ah i don't really want to be away from my family for that long isn't that weird yeah i know i so, appreciate it yeah so i just cancelled it he's just a, such a nice man aren't you well, i'm no i'm not usually <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just it's just this weird feeling in my body that I just don't want to spend that amount of time away from the, the family, the kids and stuff. So I just, yeah, cancelled it and I'm going to do some uh, other bits and pieces at home instead. Just, weird. just get the paddling pool out in the back garden. That's right. Get a little, <laughs> little, a little float. Yeah, float go, about. go and sit out there, you know, pint in your hand and just pretend you're there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll on, try. I'll let you know how it goes. On that amazing thought, we'll leave it there, sir. Thanks as always. Uh, Thank you, mate. Cheers. We'll catch up next week. We do. Unless, Bye, mate. Well, unless I break myself again, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Brought to you by www.mitmaster.com. So there we go, guys. As I say, you know, uh, possibly a bit of a controversial one, but that's, you know, these topics need discussing sometimes, don't they? And I know not everyone's going to agree on it. Um, as I say, there was there was somebody in the post that I put on Facebook that didn't agree with my point of view. Um, but as I said, you know, in the chat, I can't help but feel that sometimes with this sort of stuff, you know, people have told themselves often enough that it's okay, that it actually does start to become okay in their head. 
Um, and at no point in, in, in any way, shape or form should taking advantage of ripping off or fleecing parents be okay within martial arts. So, you know, one to think of. If you've got your own thoughts and opinions on it, then absolutely do get in touch. You know, you can get us at kickbackpodcast.com when the website redirect is actually working. Um, alternatively, you can get us on Facebook, uh, you know, if you search for Kickback with Chris the Martial Arts Podcast, or Instagram or Twitter, or just send me an email at chrisjonestkd at gmail.com. Um, be, it's always interesting, you know, I'm always interested in hearing the thoughts and opinions on these topics from other instructors and martial artists. Um, you know, it's not to say that you have to necessarily get involved with the show, although that would be cool. Um, but, you know, I can simply read it out. And if you want to stay anonymous as well, I can also read it out and not mention your name. I can just give you a pretend name, Jimmy, because that <laughs> Jimmy gets mentioned all the time. Apologize to all the people out there, actually, who are called Jimmy. Nothing against you. It, it's just sort of like the adopted name for the, the person with no name that we use within my school when we're teaching the instructors. But anyway, anyway, I digress. So um, back to it now in a regular format. That is the plan. Um, so lots of uh, lots of cool guests coming up in the coming weeks. And obviously now the weather is getting a little bit nicer. Uh, events are starting to pick up again. So I will be out and about with my mobile equipment at these various events. Um, there is also there's a little insider one for you now. Very, very cool interview that I've got lined up with a previous guest that's been on very recently, actually. Um, and we had the idea of sort of doing a almost like a role reversal, whereas um, they're going to interview me, um, which obviously at the same time will get a little bit more of an insight into them at the same time. So yeah, a little bit of a cool one we're looking at doing, um, which is trying to get the dates arranged on that one. So yeah, keep uh, keep an eye out for that. But um, as always, thank you all for your support. Don't forget, as the uh, little audio clips always suggest, you know, go along to iTunes, drop us a review. We have 28 awesome reviews there so far. It would be nice if we could double that. Um, each of those reviews and ratings does help on iTunes. It helps us link in and tie into other martial arts based podcasts and, and similar podcasts as well which helps further increase our reach obviously we're on Spotify as well now which I know is a big plus for a lot of you guys um, keep sharing the links on social media that also helps a lot um, thanks again and uh, hopefully all been well unless I manage to break myself again I should be with you all uh, same time roughly next week thanks again guys Enjoy our podcast? Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review Kickback with Chris on iTunes today.